Um, so, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my, I am Dr. Bala Murli. I am a spine and neurosurgeon at uh, Kaveri Hospital from Chennai. Um, well, I first of all like to thank Mr. Ganesh of Ganesh IAS Academy, um, Mrs. Monica Ganesh um, and his team for inviting me to this session. It's a great honor and privilege to be here. Um, I understand that you're all uh, aspirants of IAS and other government uh, uh, qualifications and preparing for exams. And uh, I hope in some way that I'm going to be able to share some information about uh, healthcare, um, some of the advances, what is artificial intelligence, what is nanotechnology and other things. But I must first um, admit I am not a specialist in artificial intelligence or nanotechnology. Uh, I'm a spine and neurosurgeon, but I use all this technology, um, which is there in this field. Uh, I have practiced around the globe. Um, I spent about 15 years in the UK. I spent a couple of years in the US. I've spent a year in the Switzerland. And I've seen over the last uh, 30 years, how healthcare technology has um, changed and revolutionized the way we diagnose, the way we treat, the way we follow up, um, and how a doctor's job has become easy, and a doctor's job has become more safe, um, and how the public look at this um, with a lot of interest, um, though people don't understand, uh, people look at this as a safety tool. There is a lot of discussion going on about the safety of AI, the future of nanotechnology, the controversies, the ethical issues. And I think, you know, we're all caught up between this because it's a new technology When everything that comes new comes with problems. Uh, everything that is new comes with scare. You know, people are worried. OK, will AI replace doctors? Will AI replace, you know, other professionals? Will people lose jobs? So what if AI takes over everything? So um, I can reassure you that a doctor's job will never go. Um, it will only be complementary. AI, I think, will only be complementary. And so will all other jobs. You know, I, I don't think yet we are, at least our generation and your generation is not going to face a crisis where humans are going to be redundant. Uh, I think we still have a role and we still have a place to play. Though AI and all other technologies that you are going to be seeing around are going to rule us in some way or the other. So I think it's interesting and important for us to know this, um, to know what is there right now. Um, while preparing for this presentation at a short notice, I've also learned a lot. I've also understood a lot about, you know, various of these uh, technologies, what it does. So let's just go down. Um, it's a huge topic. Um, and, um, you know, I'm not going to be able to tell you everything in healthcare that has changed. I'm going to give you lots of examples, which I am aware of, uh, which are one of the key things. Um, you know, in healthcare itself is a very, very big area. So, um, you know, healthcare, it comes with various verticals in administration, in operations, in disease diagnosis, in treatment. Uh, in uh, community care, in, in, the, in the community, how is healthcare looked at? Uh, how does the government uh, look at healthcare? How does the private sector look at healthcare? So um, it is rated that, you know, healthcare is one of the most complex businesses that's available today. There are many, but healthcare is one of the most complex businesses uh, because it is no more something where, you know, you go, you see a doctor, he gives you a prescription, you take a medicine and you go. It is no more like that. So healthcare is much, much more bigger. Uh, with the advances, we are able to detect things. Our longevity has increased. You know, people previously used to live only up to 50 years. Now the average Indian, the current healthcare, your longevity is more than 73 years. So you can live, you know, in good health up to 73. Um, so which which shows that you know healthcare is advanced. And, um, you know, we always think that the healthcare in the Western world is more advanced than India. But having worked in the Western world, I think we are equally competent. The discrepancy where it lies is between the urban and the rural. We have excellent healthcare in the urban sector, but whereas in the rural, uh, still, you know, the public are suffering because they don't have access to very good healthcare. And also it depends on the cost. 
so healthcare is as i said it's a complex business and anything that's complex is also expensive so um uh, you know healthcare is expensive so uh, if you find that healthcare is expensive then again the disparity comes between the affordable and the not so affordable so so with all this in mind we just going to look at a little glimpse of of uh, you know what we can see so now i'm sure there are people in this group i am not aware if you are already you know an specialist in artificial intelligence you may be uh, somebody um, from an it background or something like that and you probably know more than me uh, about um, uh, you know healthcare and, and artificial intelligence but in simple terms i'll tell you you know artificial intelligence is where you know a robot or an or an or a gadget or a computer or something is trying to replace a human in every area and every field and i think that is what that we are you know we were talking about here if you look at how this artificial intelligence came into it actually is derived from our own human brain you know we have a very very complex brain our brain is the motherboard of our body and if you look at the brain it is comes with networks and all these networks they work together i'll give you a simple example you know you sometimes you just see somebody um on on the road and you suddenly your brain start thinking i have met this person somewhere yeah so you have a familiarity of met this person it may be 5 years it may be 10 years uh, he may not look exactly the same as you are but why does just that one second look at that person your brain says i i know this person so this is one example the second is you walk into a new place and uh, you smell something and you say that you know what i recognize this smell this is a smell of this person who was there or this food or this flower or something which you probably haven't smelt for about 5 years yeah probably 5 years before you smelt that object or food or person or a perfume um, but you suddenly find that you know um, you are able to detect that and that is because every memory that we create is stored in the brain in one place yeah it's like a big room with multiple shelves you put all your things there name place person everything and suddenly when you have a trigger all of those shelves they all bring in together to one point and it comes up with an answer isn't that not amazing that the brain is able to do that so in the same way artificial intelligence uses these kind of networks of information and it gives you the results that the way you want it to so this is what is artificial intelligence so um, the same principle you have inputs you have a lot of memory they are all hidden somewhere in the brain you don't know where it is and then suddenly when at one point it gives you an output so this is what people used slowly with evolution from the 17th 19th 21st century from a steam engine now we are landing on the mars yeah so until that you know we have evolutionized we have grown bigger because we are gathering information we working on data we working on information and we are getting better and better we are all scared about artificial intelligence right but are we ever scared that oh you know you got from a nokia phone which looked like a brick to now a you know mobile phone which is you know within your hand we like that right so we accepted that the same way we have to accept artificial intelligence as well yes we say that you know gadgets are not good it, it it causes stress it doesn't give you sleep you got all kinds of disease now coming with gadget addiction but we still find the gadget a very very useful ally with you the same way artificial intelligence also is going to be looked at as something that's going to help you in the future so the first person who coined artificial you know intelligence is someone called john mccarthy during a conference in the us he came up with this idea and he presented it in a conference and that's where it triggered and he's already been doing a lot of research about this in stanford um with with cars mainly you know automobile industry is where it saw first in another simple word if you want to put where your um you know what your artificial your alexa your siri your e-commerce you know you ask alexa to play your song it will play you is basically simple artificial intelligence it it gathers the information you ask for a song from a movie it may be in the 70s 80s if it is stored in the in the system somewhere if it is stored it will pick up that from the internet it will play the song for you you talk to siri siri will talk back to you and it is so good now people have tested siri and alexa for so many complex questions which they are able to answer um so now 
we are learning you, you hear a lot of these terms called what is machine learning what is deep learning what is robotics natural language processing so these are all more upgradations of ai so ai is the basic so machine learning is something that is using large volumes of data it's like a country like you know 1.3 billion population the 1.3 billion people have aadhar cards 1.5 billion people have bank accounts or you know a big percentage of them have bank accounts so how does the government act on policies how does government come with economic changes how does government look at healthcare reforms you know where where do you need hospitals where you need where are disease pertinent within the country where do you find that there is more cancer of the lung which part of the country so how do you get that data it's not easy so that is where all these machine learning deep learning deep learning is much more deeper you know data is you know fragmented into multiple fragments and then comes the robot so all these applications of deep learning artificial intelligence is all put into robots which robots then become like humans if you all have watched the movie endiran uh, with rajinikanth had act you you probably know you know how you know the data is fed into the the robot and the robot functions now you must be all seeing about robots in healthcare we do surgeries now with robots so um, i'll be showing you examples of all this as we go along uh, but we use robots now to do operations we use robotic technology to um, be able to do certain procedures um, so all of these are leading to advancements they're leading to safety yeah why do we use robots because the precision at which you can do surgery where you know with like for example operating in a brain every millimeter of the brain is so important you cannot damage it if you damage it you're going to cause a patient who has a normal problem to become an abnormal problem if you're operating in the spinal cord one millimeter of mistake you do in the spinal cord you can be paralyzed for life you can never walk again so that is why we need all this technology to be very precise so if you look at day to day life I'm sure you know you'll be seeing that uh, we use uh, so much of this technology in your car you know you know um, the the car which I have recently bought if you go next to any object it will give you an alarm if you grow very close to an object the car will just put sudden brake and stop so um, so you can look at everything if you look at the tesla cars which probably are going to be coming to india soon the tesla car can drive by itself in the us in certain states so you don't need a driver recently in london they tested a taxi and they've actually brought it into use in some parts of the uk where a taxi will just pick up the person and go to a point without a driver so all this is through artificial intelligence because it gathers so much information along the way healthcare as well as the same which we'll see examples gaming you know you can play a game with a robot you can play chess online you can play cards online you can play so many things online where a computer plays with you and you know most of the times the computer wins than us um so so these are all the terms that where you know you will be seeing how artificial intelligence is slowly progressing into you know from the narrow intelligence to a general intelligence to super intelligence and super intelligence is what uh, the robots use so if you look at what these differences are So artificial intelligence represents simulated intelligence in machines a subset of data science whereas machine learning is a practice of getting machines to make decisions without being programmed yeah so the machine learns it the machine uses the in- information from artificial intelligence and the data and the machine performs and deep learning is a process of using artificial neural networks to solve complex problems so the complex problems are like in is for example If you do a scan of a person the machine will just tell you within a few minutes or few seconds where the problem is you don't need to wait for a radiologist to come look at the scan report it for another person to type the report then the patient gets uh, you know the report done next day and then after that then the, it goes and reaches the doctor and then the doctor will call the patient and the patient will have to come and then you have to explain so all this happens within one consultation so you go get the scan the minute the scan is done you get a report the report straight away goes back to the clinician and immediately explain to the patient and the execution is done so that is how you know deep learning is gone so ai is used everywhere 
it's used in predicting analysis real time operation customer service you know recently we had a glitch in microsoft you know you know that you know worldwide especially in europe about nearly 100 airports were shut down some airports were shut down for 24 hours and 48 hours no flights took off simply because the computer crashed there was a there was a worm or a virus or something that went wrong and in the us and uk and europe all flights because they could not even do online check in they could not do online reservations they could not the flights cannot detect and communicate with their uh, with their centers uh, navigation was not possible so this is what we are dependent now on all these problem so we can detect fraud you can detect human resources supply chains research everything comes in in healthcare as well we use it for many things we use it for training we use it for early detection diagnosis decision making see what decision making means is for example if you have a problem and sometimes you all would probably know understand that if you go with the same problem to five different doctors you will get three different opinions i'm sure you all have experienced that yeah you go to one doctor he will tell okay let's start antibiotics one doctor will say let's not start antibiotics because doctors are trained in different places one doctor gets trained in one medical college one doctor trained get abroad the practices are different i'm not saying any of those three doctors are wrong all those three treatments that they said are probably reasonably okay but what is the right decision the patient is confused he says oh i you know i went to this doctor he told me this i went to the next doctor he said don't do operation and one more doctor said do operation what do i who do i believe so that is where now ai is helping us in decision making what is the right treatment and and this is based on thousands and millions and hundreds of um, diagnosis made hundreds of people treated you know with that you try to understand mm-hmm.